Guten Morgen, welcome back to the channel. This is Grafenwurt, Germany, and today we've got a special treat for you. With the help of military spouse, certified chef, and DTV correspondent Manda McVeigh, we'll be going over what you can expect when you walk into a German grocery store and comparing that to what you might see in the commissary. To include fruits and veggies, dietary restrictions, German beer and other beverages, the American section, all types of candy, wait, what was that called? Pet food, and a whole lot more. First stop is the Etika in graph usually you're gonna have to put in a little coin to get a basket but this one uh, wasn't actually attached right outside the store you're gonna find all of your yard work and gardening supplies like fire starters for the grill soil and other necessities fun fact every supermarket in Germany has a bakery attached to it ah, good to know so we're gonna start with fruits and vegetables and work our way around the perimeter of the store uh, you have your to-go items right next to the entrance here's a quick tip though about shopping in Germany you're in a new country try new foods like, <laughs> you know, even if it's like this, this is prickly pear cactus fruit, which you would not expect to be finding in a German grocery store, but they have it like all the time. So you just have to learn, like if you have a favorite lettuce, like maybe you like arugula or something, you have to learn the German name of that food. So in German, arugula is rucola. So it's right here. But this is one euro, okay? I just want to say, this is why I don't shop at the commissary, folks. First of all, <laughs> this is local. Secondly, this bag would be $4 at the commissary, at least. And it'd be probably half wilted. So, one euro. And then they have, like, this field salad. This is just literally, like, wild field greens. Anything that says bio means it's organic. Yeah, they're delicious. $1.49. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like this pack of organic parsnips, like I'm a huge root vegetable fan, especially yeah. in the fall and the winter. Yeah. It's $2.49. One parsnip like that size would probably be two or three dollars, usually at the commissary, if you can even find them. And they're just here like all the time. Uh, yeah, avocado, all the, this? so these are, be happy and they're marshmallows right but uh, it says sour gishmak is flavor right mm -hmm. or, or taste we didn't read the label we just saw that they were like marshmallows, marshmallows shaped like ice creams and ella and i bit into them we're both like <laughs> flowers too flowers is one of my favorite things at the german grocery stores because they're like three euros for like this gigantic bundle watch this one Okay, so maybe not this one. Roses, three sixty-nine. These flowers are three forty-nine, and these flowers are only two fifty. There's always like a huge antipasti area, like you know Americans were used to like the deli has these kinds of things that are like the olive mix and stuff like that, but it's all just usually like packaged already over here. And there's different kinds of hummus, cheese stuffed peppers. Don't worry, they have guacamole. <laughs> oh yeah, eggs. Room temperature eggs. This is Ella's favorite. She's like, are these ones cooked? Or are they not cooked? He said, good cooked. Yeah. That means it's cooked. Those are hard boiled and then died. So if it says frisch, that means it's fresh. If it says good cooked, that means it's cooked. And if it says good that means it's colored. And then this one's organic. So at this Etika, this is where they have a lot of shelf-stable dairy-free things, but they have them in another section also. Dairy and dairy-free. Like this is, Alpro is a plant-based brand. And so it says, how do you say that? Flanslich? Flanslich? Flanslich. Flanslich. So plant-based, plant yep. So Alpro, that's what you'll see at like Starbucks or the coffee shops if they have any plant-based milks. A lot of the stuff they have over here specifically is like soy-based. And so if you want other plant-based, it's in a different area. This is where the whipped cream is at. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not in a free refrigerator. Like never. Never in a refrigerator. It's always just in kind of a corner somewhere next to all the other creams. Oh yeah. So see, I, okay. So this one, right? It says cuisine. Yeah. So it means for cooking. Cuisine is for cooking because it's got a lower, just a little bit lower fat content, but it's like the equivalent of heavy cream for a vegan. 
so that it won't like break and separate when you're heating it. And the whipping one has a higher fat content and more stabilizers so that when you whip it, it holds a whip, which like you can't find this stuff in America for vegans. We have to use like all these different things to try and make a whipped cream if we want it or to cook, like make a vegan Alfredo or something, you know. A lot of stuff is kind of the same. Yogurt, like you can figure it out. You don't have to, you know, it says lactose fryer, which means lactose free. You can kind of feel your way through if you're not quite sure what some stuff means. Oatly barista edition. So that's a good oat based oat milk. Take a picture, right? And then it says, you know, the brand, it's not gonna translate that unless it's just a name of something. And then it says it's butter lemon, which is a little wrong because it's actually buttermilk. So it didn't translate the milk. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, it just says the <laughs> Yeah, lemon Shoes flavored buttermilk. Butter <laughs> I have three different ways that I translate things on here too, right? Okay. So I use, I have Apple Translate because I have an iPhone. Yeah. I also have Google Translate in case Apple's struggling. And then I also do like where I'll take a picture of the label and select the text and hit translate because sometimes just like that, it only translates part of the label yeah. because it doesn't know what you want it to translate in the whole image. I took three years of German in high school, oh, okay. so I've got a little bit of a head start on a lot of people, uh, yeah. uh, at least with understanding, so I can feel my way through words a little better right. than some. This is one of my favorite things about German grocery stores. Like, it's oh, like Willy Wonka exactly. land. Yeah. And I can't eat 98% of the stuff here, but it still makes me happy to yeah, see it. Sure. These look delicious. What are these, just little marshmallows? I think that's marshmallows. Schaumkusse. Yeah, yeah. Schaumkusse. Ah, marshmallow. What's that? It's a gummy bouquet. <laughs> that's just adorable. That's cute. Filling inside. But it says, Die mit dem Plop. Yep, I think it means like bursting. Oh, uh, with the bursting, yeah. <laughs> but I was like, with the plop? <laughs> what do you mean with the plop? <laughs> I've never seen rainbow pixel savers. Katya's is a big one over here. They sell these at the commissary too. Yeah, so they're vegan, gelatin. So they're vegan, they're colored with like natural colors, they're flavored with natural flavors. And I know this because of my friends in Britain, but Smarties, Smarties are M&Ms. So if you go somewhere like ice cream shop, right? And they're like, we have Smarties. Don't be expecting some little fruit flavored candy to be sprinkled on top of your ice cream. It's gonna be m and uh, Actually know how to make these cookies. This is, I love these, these cookies. They're like little ginger cookies. Yeah. And they're for Christmas time. And then you can find them at the Christmas markets like fresh usually, right? Oh yeah. I love it. It's a Hexen house. It's a witch's cottage. <laughs> so there's all of this stuff that's like sprinkles and food, food coloring, right? Like, but if you read the ingredients, yeah. it's all colored with plant product, almost all of it. Okay. They don't use artificial coloring in the European Union if they can avoid it. For any of this stuff? Yeah. So it's like all, almost all of it is like plant-based colors. Oh. And if it has artificial coloring on it, it's one of the things that they have to like put in bold that it's a, an ingredient. Because so many people have adverse reactions to artificial colors in most places other than the US, it's considered like an allergen that they need to notify you of. I thought that was very interesting. This is the gluten-free section. Oh, this is all gluten-free. This section. is, yeah. So share brand it has been around for decades and they are one of the first gluten-free brands to like put out all the different things and they're really like I don't know trendsetters for the industry really and they just make it until it's right and then they had some products that used to actually have gluten removed wheat flour in them, like wheat starch that the gluten had been removed from. And they had so many people that were customers complain that they still couldn't use their product because they were concerned because it contained wheat or they had an allergy to wheat and that's why they ate gluten free. It wasn't because they couldn't have gluten, they couldn't have wheat. 
that they spent, I think, like five years reformulating those products so that they don't contain wheat anymore instead of losing those customers. And they have slowly started to remove soy from all of their things as well, and a lot of it is now dairy-free also. So if you're dealing with a lot of food allergy situations, they're a really good brand to look at. They're like flatbread wrap. I just put it in a pan with some butter and like grill it. And when we go to the kebab shop, I just get the kebab platter instead of, instead of the, actual the sandwich. Yeah, the and then I just wrap it in that. But they even have gluten-free gnocchi. Yeah, I saw that. And then there's like different brands down on the bottom. They have like Etika's own brand. So this is gluten fry, right? Uh, gluten free. Yeah. But then they also, like if you look at these, it doesn't always have it marked, but a lot of the time specifically, if it's like one thing in a giant case like this, they'll have it definitely marked so you can just see that they carry the product. You know what one of my favorite things is? Like all the pre-marinated stuff. Oh, I know. Steaks. So like, if you're just running in to grab something to like make for dinner that night, you can grab stuff pre-marinated. <laughs> Travel charcuterie, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, this is what we were talking about. People need to take on the train, yes. right? Or people do, and they'll just pull it out of like their tote bag because it's just like this little thin, and they'll just literally like out of their laptop bag, yeah. you're like, open it up. There's, you have a cheese one, and they're just like eating some meat and cheese. So a lot of it has to do with, they just chill some of it and some of it they don't. Like a lot of the same products will be here. Just like when you go for wine or beer, some of it's chilled, some of it's not. But it's all done in like what we call in America the sani packs, where it's like vacuum sealed to where there's no germs that can grow inside. Which is why when you get something that says shake it really well and you haven't opened it yet, you try to shake it, it doesn't shake, and then you pop it open, put the lid back on, you can shake it. So Shus means sweetened, right? Shus, yep. And it's S U with an umlaut and then an S set, which is the B looking S. Yeah. That um, means it's. Sussed. Yeah, this one so is angesust, so it's unsweetened. Yeah. And then zucker means sugar, yeah. right? So ona means without, mm -hmm. mit means with. Yep. So those are helpful when you're reading labels. Yeah. So this says gluten-free greif pudding, right? So gluten-free, and then I'm looking at the ingredients and it says rice meal, which is fine, right? Because yeah. it's rice. Yeah. But greif, typically, if it doesn't say gluten-free, is going to actually be made with semolina wheat flour. So it's like that really grainy, almost cornmeal-like texture, but it's semolina wheat, okay. so it's not gluten-free. So if someone can't have gluten, if just because it says grice does not mean pick it up. Cheese chili sauce. Cheese sauce chili. It's like um, it's like a mayonnaise like topping thing that is cheese. So it's like cheese whiz or like you know cheese from the can, but it's with the mayonnaise. Hafer uh -huh. means oat. So it's oat milk. It's vegan. Maybe, yeah, so this one says vegan. There's a dressing they have that's called American dressing. Oh, we need to see it. <laughs> Where's the dressing? We were like, this tastes like nothing that I've ever had in my life. <laughs> no. It's an American hot dog, but it's in it's water. <laughs> yeah. I think this is supposed to be like, you know, like the in and out like Thousand Island kind of sauce. Yeah, yeah. Or it could also be completely not. Like, it looks like Heinz, but it's not. 
Fun fact, in every single grocery store in Germany, they've got a small section of ethnic food, so Mexican, Asian, Turkish food. You'll also find a small section like this at the commissary. They also have very tiny jars of hummus, apparently. Poor hummus. Oh, geez, zip. I haven't seen this. <laughs> So Ahorn syrup, Ahorn is maple. You will not find um, the one that we're used to with the rooster on it. Hoi Fung, Hoi Fung, yeah, yeah, the cock stuff. But you will find the flying duck. Scharf, Scharfa, that means spicy. As you would imagine, Germany has plenty of options for their mustard. They are a big fan of that, including sweet mustard. So mustard, right, is scent. Mm -hmm. But mustard is one of the biggest allergens that they have to notify people about. So obviously it has like mustard flour. It's like in bold letters, even though you know you're buying mustard, it could contain mustard or it probably does. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to say, if you get a cleaner of some kind, it is in your best interest, if it is in a container, to save that container for refills later. Because unless you don't mind having just bags of like, you know, mostly empty things flopping around, because a good portion of the cleaning products here come in like refill packs. So if you have a container you like using, even if it's not the same chemical, like you can wash it out, make sure it's clean, and then just relabel it and put the other one in there. So This is a thing people need to know about. The Beetze sticks that hang on the side of your toilet because you don't have a tank you can put the blocks in. Special salts. Oh, there it is. Yeah, special salts. Yeah, so this is 80 euro cents for this gigantic box. But you have to put this in your dishwasher. They might not tell you, but you have to do it. And our dishwasher, we had a warning that said you can't use American soap in there. So we literally had to take the dishwasher soap back for the PX that we had just bought when they, because our dishwasher was broken when we first got there. So they gave us a brand new one and we're like, we don't want to break this one. So we had to take that back and like come to the store and get dishwasher stuff. And there's like a bigger selection of things that are like, for example, 0% aluminum deodorants. A lot of people don't want aluminum in their deodorant anymore because it's really not healthy for you. There's a way bigger selection of like zero aluminum deodorants maybe not here specifically but like when i went to the rossman's they had it there there was like 20 different yeah. kinds this is all the flavored syrups right so for your coffees for flavoring water for doing like if you have a soda stream yeah and see even just down here like the soda stream bottle is only 26. yeah we should ask them how much it is to exchange it Okay, so I just found out that you can take these soda streams, so uh, canisters, and you can take them to an Etika and get them refilled, and it is way cheaper than buying them online. I used to go and buy them online, and they were oh. so expensive. I didn't know that. Oh, she got a new one. Okay. Good pot, bitte. Okay, $5.99. $5.99. $5.99. So this is $3.49. And if you were to get this at like the commissary, it would probably be like $7 for the same size bottle. But this one is all natural. It's just cane sugar syrup and vanilla flavor. Like straight from vanilla beans, probably just infused in the sugar syrup as it was cooking. And this is like elderflower syrup they have like 20 different bottles of it it's very popular here a lot of people drink sparkling water here <laughs> right like that is a thing so if you're not into if you're trying to like cut back on your soda this is a good section to be familiar with because one it's going to save you a lot of money 
because you can make how many sparkling waters flavored for like four euro. This was something I was gonna suggest you might wanna just have like a box of at the rentals. What is this? They're just, they're literally like plant-based oh. things. They're just little drops. They look like bullion cubes and it flavors your water, but it doesn't have any sugar added. Some of them have caffeine, but it'll say that it has caffeine in it. It's just different flavors. So that way, if someone wants to have like a flavored sparkling water with no, or even just still water with no sugar added, they can just pop that in there. Uh, one of our friends, when she came over on their way to Garmish, and she was talking about her husband got a Fanta and was like, why is it so yellow? <laughs> we said, because it's only natural flavoring. Like it's natural flavoring and no food coloring. So it's basically carbonated orange juice, but it's still good. And I mean, like, I still like it. They, they add a little bit of sugar to make it sweeter, but it's not like fake orange flavor. And it's not just a bunch of sugar and a whole bunch of food coloring so that it's that crazy bright color. So you have to get used to that here. And then apple, <laughs> apple sorrel. <laughs> it's like always carbonated apple juice. My daughter gets so mad. She's like, do they have apple juice that doesn't have bubbles? <laughs> I'm like, no apple sauce. <laughs> and this is the one that you said is okay? It's okay, but I like it better than Mesomix. But... It's like orange lemon with cola, right? Yeah, yeah. So I saw polliner, and so I just thought it was alcohol. <laughs> this might not be telling the whole truth. It says they're fresh chips. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but their brand is Funny Fresh. So I don't, I don't know. We'll try them. Paprika is a thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everything says paprika. This is like your Doritos. Like your, right. Your nacho Doritos, right? Yes. And I don't think that they're all actually paprika because I try different things in paprika and they're very different flavors. <laughs> And then country style ketchup, probably barbecue. <laughs> we have a thing like that in America, those peanut puff things. We do, but they're like $6 a bag because they're in that quote unquote health food section. Oh good, they have the puppy ones. These, they're little corn puff things. So it's basically like a Cheetos puff without the cheese on it. They're still delicious. You can get by the each or by the case. And when you go to the register, they'll ask you, is this one or a case? So I never know that they're asking me that because I never pay attention and they're always staring at me. And if you don't want a whole case, then they have like the six pack holders for you to make just a six pack. And you can do a mixed six pack. It doesn't have to be of whatever brand is on the holder. And you can, like you can pop it open if you can't find an individual to just buy a one. 69 cents. And this is a liter of water. And this one is, I think, alkaline lemon water. And it's like Alpine something or other. In America, we pay like three, four dollars for it, you know, especially the sparkling ones. Pretty much they figure if you're shopping you can probably buy alcohol in this country so and just get those prices on here though right like that's a whole liter or a half a liter half a liter of beer For 99 cents yeah hmm? oh yeah okay so self-check not at most of them right if you have to sign it because it's over a certain amount of money it'll have a thing down here that says geschrift and then you sign it and then you put it in there where it says coupons and then it prints out another ticket with a barcode and you have to scan the barcode okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> little shop of horrors how fun is that have you ever seen the movie Little Shop of Horrors. It's the play. Oh, okay. So how fun would that be? Because uh, yeah. like, you know what's happening. So you could go yeah, and yeah. see oh, it in German, right? Yeah, in Graf. 
Stadt Hall, which is at the City Hall, right? Stadium, and then there's a circus in Biden next week. Information on what to do. Right? Yeah. Something in Austria. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and recycling. <laughs> yes, and it has this too, so you can. Oh yeah, for this one's they're doing cats this month. I guess. Well, that was about it for today, folks. That's a pretty long video, but if you learned something today, hit that subscribe button and don't forget about your free PCS to Germany checklist in the description. Choose.